What is up, everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning. Happy Sunday. Sunday, fun day. It is July 10th. Looks like the rain is about to stop here. I, well, I decided to make this video before I took my dog out for his walk because I didn't want to walk in the rain. It is never a pleasant morning when you wake up, you go outside, and it's raining on you, and you're walking your dog as he's sniffing every piece of grass. He's not happy with me right now. He's staring at me. You're probably going to hear him screaming at me in the background, but all is good. I think he's going to make it the whole 10 minutes of this video. But listen, in this video, we got a lot to talk about. Once again, we got some major news. I missed it. I now got it. We're going to go over it. It's about the United Arab Banks going live with XRP. We're also going to talk about Flare Networks in an interview that just went down. We're going to listen to a piece of it. I am very excited for Flare. If everything goes right, we should be getting an airdrop come September-ish time frame. Then Jed's bounce, folks. It's coming to an end. We are on the final week before this man runs out. Let's look at both sides here. Let's talk about, do you, are you in, because you're in, you're in one of two camps, right? <clears throat> he's either affected the market or, or he's not. We're going to talk it. Then a very interesting tweet about BlackRock and XRP. So without further ado, folks, if you are not following me on Twitter, it's XRP News underscore. Do not forget the underscore. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like the content and you like the lovely sound of my voice in the mornings. It's free. It helps me out. I don't know why you didn't do it already, but you should be doing it now. Now. As we do each and every morning, we head over to Live Coin Watch. What are we seeing? Well, we're seeing a pretty flat market, just like I have called for about the past two months. No new money has come in. New money isn't leaving. Everything's pretty flat. The most interesting thing that I can say by looking at Coin Market or Live Coin Watch right now is that the tether price did come down from a dollar six back to a dollar. So, question is, where did that money go? It looks like people pulled that money out of the markets and moved it into like a bank account or wherever, whatever they did with it. But it did leave the market. How do we know that? Well, the total cryptocurrency market cap has gone down. That's how we know that. Now, Bitcoin is coming in at $21,320 currently this morning. It's down about 1% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum's below 1,200. It's down 2.46%. Our beloved XRP is coming in at 34 cents as it's down 0.76%. Total cryptocurrency market cap, $958 billion as the Bitcoin dominance stays within its lovely range at 42.46%. Now, as we slide over, we look at Jed Balance and we give this an update, <clears throat> a refresh in real time. What are we seeing? We're seeing that he has 22,161,277 XRP left. If we look at his average sales with Hadge dropped from the 7.3 to the 4.7, five days five days right by the 16th so by next saturday my man is going to be completely empty now i'm excited he's gone i'm ready for the man to be out you know my feelings about him you know how i feel that he is affecting the price somehow some way ripple states he's not but this is how i look at it and it's no secret i'm very transparent about this if there is 4.7 million xrp being sold on the open market each and every day that we that means we need another 4.7 million to be purchased just to get us back to square one now what effect does 4.7 million have on the markets for the past seven or eight years as, as long as this man has been selling that's another great question that no one has really talked about or thought about I am sure when you add up the amount of XRP that this man has sold over the past seven or eight years, that somehow, some way, it is 100% affecting the price in the long term of things, in the, in the grand scheme of things, right? Now, Steven Huber put this out, and we're going to look at both sides here. He says, well, I agree that his selling didn't impact the price in the short term. It is a very bold claim to say that selling his 9 billion XRP didn't impact the price in the long term. Even if all of it stayed in dog pools, it had an effect in the diminishing demand for publicly traded XRP. 100% correct here. And then Lord Vanetta Van chimed in. He said, everyone waits for Jed to stop Stalin thinking all of his XRP within a week. Everyone thinks the price of XRP will explode after Jed finishes selling his XRP, and everyone thinks he has affected the price with the sales all this time. P. 
people are stupid say that because they don't know they don't try to understand how things work a dumb person is still a dumb person even with thousands of followers jet sells his xrp in dog pools by doing this the price of xrp in the secondary market will not be affected just like ripple when it withdraws 1 billion xrp per month from the escrow to sell it ripple sells his 1 billion back in dog pools same thing for jed ripple buys jed's xrp in the dog pools if you don't know now you know well you know my opinions my thoughts on this somehow some way 9 billion xrp going it's affecting the market the sentiment the price somehow some way even if it doesn't affect the price directly it affects people's sentiments right i have known people that have left and like i'll be back when jed's done selling 9 billion xrp so it affects people's emotions as well there is some somehow some way this does affect something mark my words is the price going to shoot up on, on next week on the 16th and 17th when he's done no i'm not expecting it to but do i think that the price will start to climb over time when we have lost this selling pressure i 100 i do and i have no problem saying that everyone's opinion is their own opinion right now we move over to this wg hop put out this this is the interview that you uh you go Philion and variable bull had about flair let's just let's listen to a quick segment from this now remember flair currently they are they're they they're on it past they're going to get to the main net and then if that's good for the next two months then they drop us the tokens over like i think it was like a 15 month window where we get a certain percentage per month and that would start come to september time frame if everything stays to course but uh, i think with regards to the price i mean in terms of our team we don't care we're here for the long term um you know we've we've been working on this for a very long time mm -hmm. most of us just really love what we're building yes. um we're not particularly you know obviously we, we want a project to be extremely successful for the community, for the project, more for the vision that we we, we think that it's useful. We think it, it solves problems in crypto that um, that by solving those problems, it creates a better experience in crypto for everyone, mm -hmm. and therefore expands the use of crypto. Um, and actually, I'm rather thankful to be launching now. Yes. A couple of reasons. Uh, one, I think, is less incentive just for people to take profits and and and, and go elsewhere. Hmm. Um, two, it means that there's you know less fanfare um immediate fanfare follow, followed by potentially um you know uh, a negative scenario where you know let's say you launched at an extremely high price um and then the price comes off hard then you know do you get um you know do, do people kind of get uh, annoyed about that do people kind of say oh well it's just a you know flash in the pan it's not real i mean we've seen some very big networks where that have happened mm -hmm. um i'd rather launch quietly and build the utility of flare based on utility that we're offering mm -hmm. uh, based on the products that uh, can be built on fair and don't forget it's not just us that can build these interoperability products mm -hmm. of course we have our own ideas such as layer cake such as relays but anyone can use flare to build something that is referencing an external system anyone can use flare to build anything there goes that utility word again folks that utility word is what is going to drive the price of not only xrp but for flair as well utility at the end of the day is the name of the game and that is what is going to drive and dictate the price of your asset as of now we've been in a very speculative market we have not seen utility but utility is right around the corner there is no doubts about it now this was an interesting treat from this guy All right his account got banned for saying it institutional investor who's at black rock well i haven't seen this but you know i like throwing interesting things out there he says this is not a price prediction xrp is going to hit a thousand dollars because our people and talking about black rock are using a private xrp ledger right now and xrp is trading at a price level of a thousand dollars you will see it after the lawsuit ends you will see xrp price glitch in the month of july i thought it was interesting Hey, if we see a glitch this month, you know, you're going to be like thinking about that tweet that Ripple Van Winkle showed you because there's a possibility right there. Interesting stuff. And then Ripple's partner and Wells Fargo are collaborating on a swift replacement. The Clearinghouse, which is a Ripple partner, is working with Wells Fargo to challenge Swift. This is very interesting. We well, can't wait to see what comes out of this. 
at the end of the day, you have a lot of people going after Swift and try to cut into Swift. There isn't going to be one winner. There isn't going to be just one system, one DLT platform that replaces Swift, right? I think you have Swift along with probably four or five other different options that these global banks are going to be able to use. Time will tell where we go with that. Now, we move over to this tweet. Matthew Lanai, the United Arab Banks goes live. The Arab Monetary Funds went a platform. This platform, WANA, is XRP enabled. So we come back here to April 29th, and what do we find out? Well, we find out that the Arab Monetary Fund is using RippleNet for financial inclusion. WANA is supporting the Arab banking system using blockchain. New business models using Ripple technology. Here is the paper from April, right? And as we move through it and we look at WANA, where does this like figure? We've seen this figure so many times. It's almost like there's a template out there of this figure that Ripple passes out and it's like, just replace payer and sender bank and name it whatever you want. Because this is what we've seen. Real time, low risk, affordable, secure, and compliant. Everything that RippleNet is and XRP. And as we go through, we come down here. It states, ask for the second model. Ripple's DLT-based solution, XRapid, that uses crypto asset XRP to enable remittance services providers to loan foreign exchange costs and ensure faster settlement. There's your keyword, the whole faster settlement they're talking about. And now we come over, and who can forget about this, October of last year, almost a year ago, where Ripple scored its first on-demand liquidity deployment in the Middle East says with 78 billion in remittances in 2020 from Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates combined the Middle East and North Africa region is home to two of the top three remittance corridors in the world today Ripple announced its continuing contribution to this hotbed of fintech innovation with the first ever in market on demand liquidity deployment in the Middle East faster cheaper remittances folks on demand liquidity is the key word how you know xrp is being used and that all ties back in to the arab monetary fund that's going to be using xrp big time folks love to see it i'm gonna be back in a little bit probably before noon with another video could a black swan event be on the horizon i got you covered let's go over it let's review it wash your damn hands be nice and be kind to each other Ripple Van Winkle is out